Hi guys. We're going to make this very snappy. We're going to be talking about the trending celebrity couple, Cora and Justin. Recently, there's been a trending topic about a famous dancer, Cora. I'm her fan, number one fan. And um, it's been everywhere that her marriage has been on the verge of breaking up. Her husband came out and said that they're having a divorce. He also made a comment on a blog saying that um, his wife is a narcissist and she's been cheating and blah, blah, blah. A lot of us would have come across these messages. It's trending everywhere online. So I decided that we should talk about it because as a relationship therapist, their story is very relatable to every marriage. A lot of marriages are going through that phase. So it's easy for us to use them as a point of contact while we talk. My name is Okoro Blessed in Kiroka and I'm popularly known as Blessing CEO, Africa Certified Relationship and Mental Expert. Sorry, I'll have to, you know, take out that phone that is ringing. It's distracting. Sorry about that break. I had to take out the phone. The ringtone was very distracting. <laughs> now, um, the problem with a lot of people is that um, we repeat people's mistakes. Um, that's the reason why we always fall victims. A lot of people shy away from topics like this because you hear things like, mind your business, mind your business. It's not your business. Mind your business. It is the same minding of business that puts you in a very difficult situation. Anything that has been brought to the public has been made public business. And oftentimes, that is why we say keep your relationship and your marriage private. The moment it comes up to the social media, definitely, people would always use you as a topic or a point of conversation. Let's quickly go into the main topic. Um, there are some questions people have been asking, you know. A couple of people have sent me messages. I got some of this questions on blogs and all that now the few questions a lot of people have been asking number one what is the meaning of narcissist because Cora's husband came out to say that Cora is a narcissist now I'm quickly going to explain narcissist is somebody who is manipulative somebody who is controlling somebody who always wants to play victim yes a narcissist is that person who is a freak. They always want to manipulate you, control you, and always feel like the victim. A lot of us have narcissists around us. It could be your husband, it could be your wife, it could be your brother, it could be your sister, or it could be your neighbor. Yes, oftentimes in a relationship and in a marriage, one person is always a narcissist. Some people don't even know that they're narcissists. Yeah, that's a narcissist. I'm giving you my own plain definition. Number two, a lot of people were asking, why did the man speak up in public? When you go through the comment section on different blogs, you hear a lot of women saying, why did he come out in public? After all, the woman just gave birth. The man is wicked. You would have given the woman time. You know, a lot of people said that. First of all, before people bring their matter in public, they would have tried in private. Many people say it's a stunt. Many people say it's clout, but it shows you that a lot of people are not intelligent. If you say it's a stunt or you say it is clout, it simply means you're not intelligent. You're a daft. Because if you're an intelligent person, you will see expression. You will see that there is something wrong. For you to say it is clout, you're just trying to deceive yourself. There's a problem in their marriage, which is normal. You know, when people come and say, mind your business, don't talk about people's divorce, it simply means you are abnormal. It is not, this thing that is going on in their marriage is very normal in every marriage. Every marriage have witnessed this thing going up. Yes, it's not new. The difference is the fact that it's theirs is public. Some people also said, ah, so all this while they've been fighting since 2018, how come they put it in public? It's the same way you'll be fighting with your husband and neighbors will come and you'll be smiling. <laughs> When your husband is having a heated quarrel and a neighbor knocks on your door, <laughs> when they close the door, you continue to fight. It's the same way you and your husband will be fighting when your children come around. You do, <laughs> it's fine, baby. <laughs> when your kids go, you continue. 
That is what is called privacy and public. P public is a show. You put up a show for the public. The earlier you put, begin to understand it, the better for you. What is happening between Cora and her husband is not abnormal. It is very normal. It happens in every marriage. So you don't expect people to put out their misunderstanding in public. No, what comes out of the public are the things that you have edited, the beautiful things that come out in public. I've told you guys this before. Even if you put out your fights on Instagram, they will ban you. There are some certain things that are supposed to be done privately. Some people ask, why did he speak out publicly when Cora have just given birth? I applaud the man for speaking out publicly. Oftentimes, in this part of the world, men are not supposed to talk. For people to voice out publicly, it simply means they've been trying privately. Like I said, the reason why I don't bring my relationship matters to the social media is because this place is filled with children. A lot of people are so shallow. A lot of people are so small. They don't think beyond their nose. So you just see different children throwing tantrums and all not. Well, very few people are actually vast on this app, right? It's okay for him to bring it public. For him to have come out public to say the things that he said, it simply means he might have been trying privately. And sometimes you need to bring some certainty in public for some people to actually pay attention. There are some people that will never listen until you come and shout outside. It happens in a lot of marriage and relationship until you go to the man's office until you come out and the neighbor hear your voice. Some people don't pay attention until you carry a microphone. Exactly. <laughs> so it's very okay for the man to come out public. That is called expression. When you express yourself, you feel better. Now, everything Cora's husband has said publicly might not be true because what he voiced out publicly is called feeling. Feelings are not always true. Feelings is just the way you perceive things. It's a perception. And the reason why marriage often go bad so many times is because we bottle up our feelings. Feeling starts from assumption. When you feel a certain way, you are not sure. That's the reason why sometimes you want your spouses to tell you, I love you. You want them to say something. When they say those things, it actually helps your feelings become more true. When you think that somebody loves you and you ask them, do you love me? And they say, yes, I love you. Uh -huh. It now makes that thing that you feel authentic because they open their mouth to tell you that I love you. It now sealed that thing that you're assuming in your heart. Now, oftentimes, men bottle up their feelings. So many men have assumptions in their head. You get, because a lot of men will bottle up their feeling from 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2020, 2023. So they've built up so much assumptions in their head. They don't ask questions. In this part of the world, men are not allowed to talk. If you talk, they say you're talking like a woman. If you express yourself, they say you are nagging, you are ranting. So, so many men bottle up feelings. That is the bet of assumption. When your feeling is being bottled up, you'll be assuming too many things that are not true. Because you are not free to ask questions. You are afraid that when you have ask questions, it will turn to fights. So sometimes you just be assuming. Now, you begin to believe your assumptions. Your assumptions are not true. Oftentimes, those things you feel are lies. The only time you can get a clarification is except you talk about it. That is the essence of communication in marriage. I feel, baby, I'm feeling you don't love me anymore. Oh, baby, that's not true. The reason why you think I don't love you anymore is because the job in the office became so much. They gave me a target of 10 billion. So I'm distracted and I'm running up and down. I still love you, my baby. I still, but just give me time. Let me be able to meet up my targets in the office. I'm distracted. Hmm. You will now see that that thing she was feeling wasn't true. The reason why you drifted away was because there was something preoccupying your mind. That's the reason why as relationship therapists, we used to preach communication, communication, communication. But if she did not express herself, she might start assuming that her husband is cheating. Just because he's withdrawn for a particular time. Assumptions begin to mess with your head. Oftentimes, what used to destroy relationship and marriage is assumption. Very few people have evidences in marriage. You'll be hearing she cheated. He cheated. Most of those things are assumptions because there's a breach of communications. You begin to believe those feelings that are not true. I don't know if you understand my point. Exactly. So it is okay for the man to voice out. I actually like the way the um, Justin voiced out. Because first of all, the reason why it became a thing for concern is because 
This Justin, which is Cora's husband, he's not even a talking type. We know him for supporting his wife. We know him for loving his wife. In fact, I don't even think I've even heard Justin speak. Every time I see Cora's husband, it's either with her, making videos for her, supporting her, or loving her. So for him to speak out, it's a cause for concern because this is a man that doesn't talk. You cannot say he wants to spoil his wife's image. No, because this is somebody that practically built his wife. I admire their friendship. I used to call, I call Cora magic. I call her husband a magician because she's the magic and he always make the magic come alive. Do you understand? So for him to voice out, it is very okay. Whether he voiced out after childbirth or before childbirth, or, we don't know what transpired. We don't know what has been going on between the both of them. We don't know the misunderstanding. We don't know the perception. We don't know what he has been, you know, bottling up inside. So for him coming out to express himself, it is very, very okay. It is from expression you get to know where the problem is. The problem with we as human beings is that we always want people to shut up. Shut up, shut up, shut up, mind your business. Imagine if everybody mind their business. A lot of you would die in silence now. It's because you have people like us that are talking that you are watching. Imagine all of us are like you. We just decide to keep our mind up. Who will you be watching? Who will you be using to cure depression? Who will, using, who, who will you be using for entertainment? Who will you be listening to? It's because everybody wants to bottle up their feelings. Mind your business, mind your business. But you, when the thing starts, when you are in love, mind your business. But when the team begins to do bad boys, you are looking for who will help you. Justice for this one. So it is too minding your business. We don't get to find solution. We just bottle up feelings, bottle up feelings because oftentimes you see marriages breaking up like this. It's an explosion. What is happening between Cora and her husband is called explosion. That point you have endured because there was a write-up the husband wrote where he said, I've been enduring it for since 2018. So it's a bottle of feeling. And one day he wakes up and he explodes and somebody is telling me he's cloud chasing. They want to sell book. It's an explosion. That's the reason why you are asking yourself, ah, ah, what happened? How can he just call? It's an explosion. When you bottle up your feelings so much, you can explode at any time. When people least expect it. That's the honest truth. But when you communicate, you hardly explode. So you don't know what she has been putting inside the assumptions, the feelings, the lack of communications. I don't want to talk. I don't want my wife to lose her career. You don't know how long he has considered this. Do you understand my point? So it's very okay for the man to voice out. So number two, um, why did the man speak up in public? A lot of people are actually still saying, why did the man speak up in public? It's okay for him to speak up in public. After all, their relationship was public. Yes. If you're a public figure, it's okay to speak up in public. Because your life is an example. Your life, people are looking at you. So speaking up in public is not wrong if you're a public figure. Yes. Because the same thing these couples are doing in public is the same thing they are going to go and do in court. You know a lot of you are so ignorant. You don't know anything about divorce. Some of you just sit on Facebook and be shouting, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. When people like us who are well experienced, people like us who have gone through divorce, who understand the four walls of divorce and what the court looks like when we are talking, you'll be running your dirty mouth instead of you to pay attention. Some of you don't know jack about divorce. So when we talk, listen, you should be opportune that you're getting the sessions for free. You're not paying for it. So, good. The same thing you do on the social media is the same thing you're going to go and do in the law court. You're going to be expressing yourself to a judge. Yes. You'll be expressing yourself to a judge. You'll be bringing, so it's about expression. Do you know the meaning of courts? Courts will help you express yourself and give you time to reconcile. Because when you express yourself, you feel lighter. That is the reason why in courts, they were joined. They were joined. They were joined. It's when they now see that the both couples are harmful to each other. That's when they can divorce the both of you. Like me, as a coral blessing, it took me five years to divorce. And the reason why it lingered is because, you know, they want to drop. Oftentimes, courts don't necessarily want to divorce you. The reason why oftentimes they take time in court is because they want to see if the couples will come to an amicable ground. If the couples do not come to an amicable ground, it simply means that they will become harm to themselves. The courts will have to ground divorce. Like I said, some people don't know the meaning of divorce. Divorce simply means let us not kill each other. Let's leave and be watching each other grow. That's the meaning of divorce. But some people will be shouting, God forbid, God forbid, we will not divorce in Jesus' name until one person die. They don't used to shout this God forbid until one person die. The only time people will accept divorce is accept man key wife or wife key man. It's to show you that people are so ignorant. People don't have to die 
before they separate. People don't have to die before they let go. People don't have to die before the divorce. Divorce is not a crime. Divorce is like survival. We have tried and things are not working. Let's go and separate. But no, the ignorant, shallow people. No, God forbid, oh, God forbid, oh, until one person died. The only time they used to accept divorce is except there's a death. You don't have to die. You don't have to die to let people go. Death is not supposed to separate you and somebody. We can actually be alive, living our lives, telling our stories without dying. That is the meaning of divorce. For those of you who are completely ignorant about divorce. And then number three, somebody asked, why did he not wait for some time? She just gave birth. A lot of people are saying, why didn't the husband wait for some time? You could, like I said, it's an explosion. You can explode anytime. Explosion doesn't have control. It's like a ticking time bomb. Pim, pim, pim. Explosion simply means you have exhausted your patience. So when you want to explode, at that point, you don't care. You don't care. All those period you have been bottling things up. You have been, you know, enduring, 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 enduring. When you explode, you become shameless. I don't care anymore. You are ready to let everything go. Everything should just get out. It simply means you have piled up, piled up. There is no more space inside that bottle. So I think that's what happened to Cora's husband. It's okay for you to explode. Very, very okay for you to explode. Then number four, people are also asking, is it a joke or a stunt? It's not, I don't think it's a joke or it's a stunt. If they both want to reconcile, they can come and tell you that it's a joke or it's a stunt. But honestly speaking, something is going wrong, something is going wrong in their marriage and I feel it's a bridge of conversation. So I don't think it's a joke or it's a stunt. Did Cora really cheat at this point in time? So long as there is no evidence, I'm going to tell you something. If a man wants to divorce a woman, the first thing he talks about is cheating. If a woman wants to divorce a man, the first thing she talks about is domestic violence and cheating. Those are the two things people talk about. A man will say, my wife cheated. A woman will say, my husband beats me. I want to kill me. That's the general thing that we know that when public here, they will come and frown at, right? Cora might not have cheated. He might just, when, when a man is upset, the first thing he accuses his wife of is infidelity. Because at that point, there's a bridge of conversation. There is no accountability. You don't know what's going on with the person. This person might be on their own. You might always see your wife on her phone. You will just conclude within yourself. Because we have lost that bridge of communication, accountability, you no longer tell me where I'm, you're going to. I no longer tell you. Where, you can just assume that somebody is cheating. So I don't think at this point, because there is no evidence of the cheating. So it could just be bridge of conversation, the way he feels. It's okay for you to feel that your wife is cheating. It's still okay for you to feel that your husband is cheating. Do you understand? That's why I said, oftentimes when you feel that way, you have to talk about it. You have to communicate about it because it's a feeling. Many times your feelings is a lie. Your feelings are not always true. Your feelings are just perceptions and assumptions accumulated in your head. And that's why no matter how you feel, you have to talk about it. Then number five, is Cora a narcissist as her husband claim? We don't know. Oftentimes, like I said, every one of us have an attribute of narcissism. Now, outside the country where Cora lives, their way of life is different from our way of life. The same nagging that many of us are going to do in Nigeria and get away with it, an American man will call it narcissism. This nag that all of us used to nag. Because you women, all of you have attributes of narcissists. If you are a nag outside the country, they will group you as a narcissist now. Yes. All you women that used to hold your husband in shirt when he cheated on you. Narcissist. This is a man. We don't even know that it's narcissism. In this part of the world. So, the fact is they are in a different kind of world where they have a different kind of law. Even when you scream at your partner outside the country, it's not, they take it seriously over there. You are mad. All this, you are mad. You are stupid. You are nonsense. Eh? Outside the country, you are going in for it. So a lot of us that are sitting down here running our mouth and judging Cora or the husband, all of you are narcissists though. You are narcissists. So all of us have... <laughs> the network is cutting me off. <laughs> so I'm trying to get network. But don't worry, guys. I'm changing my location in the house network is really really bad so um we're gonna pick up from here I, I think i just changed my location to my closet area so 
a lot of us actually have the attributes of narcissism in us. It's the ability to control it that is the important thing. So is Cora a narcissist? We don't know because there's no evidence. The husband just came out and expressed himself and told us how he felt about the situation. Um, another question. <clears throat> Why were they pretending all along? while inwardly they were fighting like i said from the beginning there are some certain display that are meant for the public you are not supposed to come and be fighting in public public is supposed to see the good part of you just like when you wake up every day dress up put on your makeup wear your hair public is about intentionality anything you put out in the public you are intentional about it that's why it is called a controlled content Yes, before I came to this live video, I wore my hair, I applied my lip gloss, and I brushed my hair. I did not come from the way I was when you see me in my house in bed with my hair and all that. I organized myself. So anything that is coming to the public is intentional. It is not by mistake. So there is no way I'm going to come and put my fight. If I want to put my fight on the social media, it simply means there's, there's a point I want to prove. So you cannot say, eh, why did they, why did they not, why... Instagram, Facebook is a controlled content. Okay? Then the, they also ask, can they reconcile? Yes, they can reconcile. It's just the normal marital differences. But the reason why it looks as if everything is all out on social media is because we don't know how long her husband would have been bottling up this feeling or feeling the way he felt. So, but once he's able to express himself and they communicate, there is nothing you cannot reconcile in marriage, you know? When I was going through a divorce, there was something the judge told me. The judge said, you see this reconciliation, reconciliation, reconciliation. What the judge does in the law court is just to play third party. That talk that your husband don't want to talk in the house, that talk that your wife don't want to talk in the house, you come and talk about it in the law court. Everything you don't want to discuss about, you will still say it in the law court. You come and explain yourself. For those of you men that say, I don't have time to talk, I don't have time to talk, when you go to the law court, you must talk. For those of you women that say, oh, I don't want to talk, you will talk. So at the end of the day, that thing you are running for, that reconciliation you are running from, from your house, is still going to happen in court. There's no difference between the reconciliation you sit with your husband and the one that happened in court. The only difference is that in court, there's a third party. There's a moderator. That's just the difference. But it's the same expression, no? the same talk, no? no, I want to, I don't want to. So they can reconcile. It's just coming to a common ground. And that's why oftentimes... If you don't want to go to court, you go, for, you go and get a relationship therapist. If you don't want to go to a relationship therapist, you look for somebody you respect in your home. If you don't want to use the person you respect in your home, you look for a pastor. You must, there must be one person that you respect that can moderate you and your wife or you and your husband. The moment you lose that person that you respect, that's when you end up in court. You end up in court when this one does not want to help us. This one does not want to help us. A lawyer will help you now because they're collecting money. Judge will help you now because it is their work right so that's those same things we always run away from when we're having misunderstanding with our spouse are the same things we are still going to go and face in court the difference is now we're going to pay money do you understand and after paying money we are still going to pay our lawyers we are going to spend do you understand than um, when we are just reconciling on our own so the last but not the least somebody asked hold on guys the last but not the least, somebody asked, is marriage a sham? Somebody is asking, is marriage a sham? No, marriage is not a sham. Um, hello, Johnson. Please, I'm on a Zoom live. Just give, I'm on a live video. Just give Precious the key. I'll call you back. Are you here? I'll just give her the key. I'll call you in the next few minutes. So, somebody is asking, is marriage a sham? Hold on. Sorry, guys. Somebody is asking, is marriage a sham? Marriage is not a sham. Marriage is a beautiful thing. But like I said, we have so many ignorant people. Even from my comment session, you will see a lot of foolishness in my comment session. Yes. You can imagine the kind of people that come and judge your marriage. Now, if you read Blessing CEO's comment session, even on this live, you will see so many amount of foolishness. You see so many amounts of stupidity. These are the people that you allow to come and judge your marriage. People that don't even have sense. <laughs> all these Facebook miscreants. Very few people actually have sense. Very people actually pay attention. So these are the people that you bring your relationship and marital issues to, to come and be judging. So they can't even make a complete statement. These are the people that you are seeking validation from. 
So marriage is not a sham, but the difference is that you people are displaying these beautiful things to, to people who do not see anything beautiful in life. Do you understand my point? Now, a smart person will understand that whatever is happening between Korah and her husband is normal. Very normal. There's nothing new that wants to happen to Korah and her husband that has not happened to anybody. The difference is, do they want to make it work? If they want to make it work, they'll come together and make it work. But their marriage is not, it's not a shock. Often perfect marriages always have problems. Most of the perfect marriages that we see have a lot of problems. Most of the marriages that are lasting have a lot of problems. It's just depending on how you manage these problems behind closed doors before you get out. And the only way you can manage this problem behind closed doors is expression. Because now in marriage, this one is saying, shut up, let me talk. In marriage, it's either the man is shutting the woman up or the woman is shutting the man up. Like I said in one of my previous posts, one person always wants to supersede the next person. One person wants to be talking. He doesn't want the other one to talk. There's one person that is always feeling like I helped you in this marriage. Everybody wants marriage, but nobody wants to walk. You want to marry a woman and leave the work for her. You want to marry a man and leave the work for him. All of you want marriage, but you don't want to walk. Marriage is like a title. It's just like being a king. You want to be a king of a community, but there are things that come with being a king. It's not about being a president, just like President Buhari. If President Buhari tells you what is going on on the presidential seats, some of you can't sit there. Some of you are just good in sitting on Facebook and Instagram and running your mouth. Hey, hey, Buhari, Buhari. Some of you can't sit on Buhari's seat for three, for three days. You will die. Why? You only want to be a president, but there are obligations that come with presidency. If you don't meet up that obligation, you are a failure as a president. That's the honest truth. But Buhari is our president, but every time he gets dragged for not doing those responsibilities, it's the same thing as marriage. All of you want so much that you cannot keep. Blessing, go and marry. Blessing, go and marry. Blessing, go and marry. Bless. They don't want to know whether blessing is ready for me. Just go and marry. That's the same way all of you want. You, you are so eager to see marriage. But there is no work. There is no effort. One person is leaving marriage for one person. Either one person in the marriage is desperate and one person in the marriage does not want to marry. There's always, so, there's always one person that wants to carry marriage and one person that is tired of marriage. So marriage is not a sham. It's just that we have a bunch of lunatics who want to get married, but they don't want to put in effort. It is people who are getting married that are spoiling the name marriage because they are married for the wrong reasons. They don't want to learn. They just want to marry. If you see people talking about marriage, you see some lunatics talking nonsense. Shut up. Go and sleep. Mind your business. They are still the ones that will still enter the marriage and be constituting nuisance. These same people, they don't want to learn. Or you are still single now. No. If you are single, they are insulting you. Don't go and cause. No, 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 no. So it's not marriage that is the sham. It's the people, the idiots that are entering inside that are the sham. It has nothing to do with marriage. Marriage is already a beautiful entity on its own. Too many idiots going there. Too many idiots. Mm. Too many idiots. They don't want to rest. All of them, some of them think that when they marry, they have made it in life. Hold on, guys. Yes. Some of them are seeing marriage like, ah, I won't marry. It's, it's a title for, for some people. Some people are seeing marriage like on a, um, on a chieftaincy title. Yes, you know some people that once they make money, they want to go and collect chieftaincy title in their village. They will pay and collect chieftaincy. That's how so many people see marriage. So once they just get that chieftaincy title, they don't want to do what comes with the chieftaincy title. A lot of people that have chieftaincy title don't go to the village. But the meaning of chieftaincy title, it comes with an obligation. If you are a chief in a particular community, there's something you are contributing. You go for meetings, you go for this, you go for that. But some people have chieftaincy title just with money. They just want the title. They don't want to put in the work. It's the same thing as marriage. So marriage is not sham. Even though I've been married before and I've been divorced, when I got married before, I was an idiot. I was among the idiots that rushed to go and marry. I married at 18 years. What was I going to do? Inside? I did not know anything about marriage. If you ask me anything about marriage when I got married, I did not know. I just wanted to wear a wedding gown and shake my head. Hey! hey, hey. You see, I was dancing, daddy. Hey! My uncle was like, so you can dance like this? Yes. I was among the idiots that entered marriage. I did not know jack about marriage. So now, when people are telling me, blessing, go and marry. You never marry. Relationship expert will not get married. I will just be laughing. Because I don't want to be an idiot like you again. I'd rather be single than to go into this marriage entity and go and be constituting nuisance and be making noise every time. Some of you don't know what it takes to be married. That's the reason why when you see small misunderstanding like this, all of you will be ranting and shouting. Some people say, eh, they're not supposed to quarrel. Quarrel is normal. 
this thing that is happening to Cora and every normal person. Um, this thing that is happening to drop that thing for me then. This thing that is happening to Cora and her husband is normal. This thing that is happening to Cora in those days when there was no social media, that is what you used to carry to your village meeting. Yes, the difference now is that social media is now the village meeting. But far back then, even your mothers, they used to go for village meeting with your father. It is chief that used to settle this marital quarrel in those days. These things that social media is doing is what the chief and the community used to settle. So it's not abnormal. It happened to your mother, it happened to my mother. But the difference is that social media are filled with small, small children that don't have sense. But when, you are, when it is the chief of your village that is um, trying to reconcile you and your husband, they are elders, they know that it's not my marriage, you get. But when you come and mix your problem with small, small children on Facebook, what do you expect? When they say, keep your marriage private, it's because, keep it private because we have a lot of nuisance here. These people that are judging you, you they don't know anything about marriage. That's the reason why it's so easy for them to drag you when you're having a misunderstanding. They will drag you. They will drag you. It's because they feel they already have. A, some people just have a crazy perception about marriage. They feel that when you marry, you're not supposed to fight. When you marry, you and your wife is not supposed to quarrel. That's the reason why when there's a small misunderstanding, it's always a big issue for them. So I'm still going to stick to it. Just like they used to tell me, relationship therapist without relationship. Why do they say relationship therapist without relationship? Because they've not seen my relationship. It only shows you that the social media only know what they see. They think I don't have a relation because I did not show them the relationship. Because I did not come and put a man for them to validate. And that's why I have peace of mind. I don't even want you to know the man. Don't validate. Instagram in-law, Facebook in-law. I don't even need you because some people are not good in-laws. Some of you in-laws don't have sense. So I don't want your senseless opinion. Yes. So it is, I keep saying, keep it private, keep it private. We did not say don't show off your spouses, but just keep it private. Why are you keeping your relationship private? People here, they don't have sense. All these small, small children, GSS1, GSS2, all of them are on Facebook. Primary 1, primary 2, they are on Facebook. So those are the people that will come and be putting out inside your marital wahala. People that don't even know. So when you see these comments, oftentimes, they are small, small children. Do you understand? It only takes mature people who are bold like us to even come and talk about this topic a lot of mature people will not even talk they'll just pass so people that are dragging you talking about you are small small miscreants are in secondary school or primary school do you understand my point it takes gods to talk about this topic because even as i'm talking about this topic right now i'm getting dragged so some mature people might not even want to talk they'll just pass so at the end of the day the people that you have on social media are miscreants very few people can even voice out those are the people you are trying to seek validation from. Those are the people you are trying to show off. Didn't worry. See, show your achievements. Show every other thing off. But do not show your love life, your private life, your relationship. Keep it to yourself. Do you understand? Because these people you are showing, they don't even know what marriage is about. They don't know. To them, it's show. To them, it's entertainment. A lot of people who are loving Cora and her husband, they're only enjoying the display of Cora and her husband. They like the entertainment. They don't like Cora. They don't like the husband. It's just that entertainment. They're ah, so we're not gonna see this Oyibona and this Blackie where they always come down. Say this fine couple where they always come give us. It's just the entertainment for them. It is the entertainment for them and nothing more. So it is just what they are going to miss. It's like Big Brother. Hey, we're not gonna see these people again for television. Oh yes, it's not genuine love. That's the truth. If you should bring this thing for me now, please. Hmm, bring it for me. It's not genuine love. So we need to pay attention. I thought I should throw in more light on this topic. Marriage is beautiful. I've been married before. I've been married before. There is nothing as beautiful as having somebody around you. There is nothing as beautiful as having companion. It can never be underrated. You can't do everything by yourself. Jagaban, Jagaban, I'm too strong, I'm too strong. You can't do it by yourself. You can't talk to yourself. So you need companion. Marriage is beautiful. But the fact is, we keep choosing the wrong companion. That's why it looks as if all of us want to be alone. It's because some of you are married, you cannot talk to your husband. The major things that make you get married, you don't enjoy it in marriage. That's why it looks as if everybody wants to come out, everybody's single, everybody's that. Because the major reason why we get married, when we get married, we don't even enjoy those benefits. That's the honest truth. So that's the reason why they will tell you, put in work. Marriage is work. If you don't want to work, stay single. Marriage is not hard, like people are saying it. It is people that are in the marriage that is hard. Marriage, marriage, marriage. It's not marriage, it's the people. Some of you are just too hard. Some of you are not ready. Some of you just want title. Some of you are the ones spoiling this name called marriage. 
That's the honest truth. Some of you are the ones that are making the marriage scary. This thing that is happening between Cora and her husband is normal. It will happen in your own marriage. There is no God forbid here. God forbid my marriage will not spoil in Jesus' name. Your marriage will break up and make up. <laughs> the real meaning of marriage is the fact that you break up and you make up. But for breaking up in marriage, you're not going to break up. It's just like when you tell your boyfriend, it's over. It's over, I'm not doing again. Do you know how many times you say it's over in a relationship? You will carry your bag, the guy will come beg you, you will come back. It's over! It's over! It's over! It's over! You carry your bag, the guy will come beg you. That's marriage. And sometimes you say, I'm not doing again. I'm going to my father's house. Husband will come beg, wife will come beg. That's marriage. If you cannot break up and make up, forget it. So there is no magic. All these things you are saying. Cora and her husband might see reconcile after all this drama. That's the honest truth. And so the breakup is, the breakup even makes you tighter. The breakup actually makes you more valuable. Just like now, as Cora and her husband are going through this stuff and they are reading comments, they will see that, they will try to want, if they are people, if they are reading comments, they will be like, people, because they are loved. In as much as they are having misunderstanding and people are dragging them, they are loved. They are one couple that people don't want them to dissolve. When they even get to read the beautiful comments, they can sit down and say, ah, let's make it work. They are genuinely loved. I love them as couples. Trust me. I said it in one of my Instagram posts. If I had the power to bring these couples back, I will bring them back. If prayers could bring couples back, if they want to divorce, I will pray. That's the honest truth. So marriage is actually very beautiful. It's just what you make out of it. You people should stop marrying wrong. With the more you buy, <laughs> blessing, relationship expert, we want this um, spoil marriage. I'm not the one spoiling your marriage. It's you that is spoiling your marriage. You make choices. That man that you marry that is beating you, that is a narcissist, that is insulting you, how does the blessing spoil the marriage? You can't make choices and start looking for who is spoiling the marriage. The moment you make a bad choice, your marriage is already spoiled. It has nothing to do with what somebody is saying. The moment you are married to people that are not teachable, because some of you are married to people that are not teachable, they cannot learn and they cannot unlearn. Your marriage is already spoiled. It has nothing to do what, with what somebody is saying on Facebook. Mm -mm. Some of you just like pushing blame. It is your choices that spoil your marriage. It is your choices that are your marriage. It is not what Blessing CEO is saying. Blessing CEO is just a guide. Blessing CEO will just give you opinions and options. You will now choose. After all, Blessing CEO don't even know your husband. Blessing CEO don't know when you date them, how you take Mariam. So how Blessing CEO won't take spoil your marriage? No. So when people talk to you on the internet, nobody can spoil your marriage. It's a lie. Some of you now in a marriage don't already spoil. Now they find who go call. Your bad choices is what spoils your marriage. The red flags that you ignore is what spoils your marriage. Nobody can spoil your marriage. After all, nobody was giving Cora and her husband any bad advice. Cora and her husband were the perfect couples. At least you will not come and say they, they listen to Blessing CEO. But they still had misunderstanding that was lingering. Maybe there was a communication gap. There was a communication breach. There was something that went wrong. And you'll be so shocked that what actually caused the misunderstanding between Cora and her husband is a minor thing. Often time, I've told you before, what used to spoil marriage is not cheating. All this cheating and all this one are just noise. The things that used to scatter marriage are very minor things, very small. That small thing that will be lingering, 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 lingering becomes big. It's like a little drop of water. Boom, 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 boom. is an ocean. That's it. Those small, small things. If you actually listen to the real thing that is causing trouble in this marriage, you will laugh. It might be one small thing. One small thing, small, small like this. So it's not even the big things that spoil marriage. It's the tiniest of things that we overlook. Ordinary, ordinary, ordinary. So now ordinary this one. So now ordinary water. So now ordinary hair. That's what used to spoil marriage. That's what lingers and it becomes, you know, very, very huge. So if you're married, please pay attention. If you are single, please pay attention. Marriage, 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 marriage. If you marry the wrong spouse, you will suffer. All of us are running heavenly race, heavenly race, heavenly race. Heavenly race, heavenly race. If you make the mistake to marry a wrong spouse, hmm, you will start to face your own hair fire before you get to heaven. So you need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. With this few point of mine, I hope I've been able to teach one of you something. God bless every one of you for coming up on my life. In as much as people said, oh, blessing, don't talk about it. 3,000 views, almost 3,500 viewers. Blessing, mind your business.
2.9 viewers now who is viewing Bless and See You. It simply means for people to rush into live videos like this, it simply means a lot of people can relate to this, to this problem. That's the honest truth. For people to want to come into this live video and listen to this topic, this Cora story is a lot of people's story. No matter how they want to come and pretend on social media and they are acting perfect. Learn. Learn. Don't forget, like I used to tell a lot of my couples, you are the one that will feel the pain. No matter how you want to insult blessing see you, I cannot share in your pain. Lie, lie. If they are divorcing you today, I will not share in your pain. You will carry your pain on your own. I will not still share in your joy. It is still you that will enjoy your marriage. So whether you are shouting blessing see you, mislead you. Blessing see you, no mislead you. Blessing see you, carry you for head you know, carry you for head Everything you are walking towards is towards your own happiness, not me. If you become better, you become better for yourself and your family. If your marriage work, your marriage work for yourself and your family. Blessing see you might not even play a major role. I might just congratulate you when I see you. So anything you are doing, you are doing it for yourself. Until you begin to understand that you are doing things for yourself. You begin to put in effort. Sometimes you always think that when you, when you do the things that blessings say, you are helping blessing. No, you're not. You're helping yourself. If you take good advice and it works for you, you've helped yourself. If you take bad advice and you've spoiled yourself. Until you begin to understand that it's yourself that you are doing. Right? Uh -huh. That's when you begin to take correction. Motivational speaker, motivational speaker. The motivation is for you. The motivational speaker is doing okay. They only come to use their strength to motivate you. If you get motivated, you fasten up your belt and have the hope for tomorrow. If you don't get motivated, you remain depressed or you commit suicide. So oftentimes we need to understand that we are not helping people in public. Because sometimes when people comment, people think that you are helping me. Or when I probably give an advice or drop an opinion, you think that you are helping my life. You're not. You're not. Every choices and every consequences that come with your choices, you will suffer it alone. The day you begin to understand this is the day you begin to open up your mind to unlearn and relearn. It's the day you begin to make better choices for yourself. Not for Blessing CEO. Not because you're a Blessing CEO's fan. But because this thing can help me. Let me use it to better my life. If you like, remain on Facebook and be ranted. A lot of these people that are shouting on Facebook are still small, small boys and small, small girls. Don't let them to distract you. Some of these people are still 18, 19, 20, 21. They have not seen life. Some of these people who are distracting you, they are frustrated. Some of them don't have destination. So what do they do? If they see that you are going somewhere, they will come to come and distract you so that you will not reach where you are going. So you need to be careful. Don't be distracted by all these noisemakers. A lot of these noisemakers don't have anything to lose. They don't even have anywhere that they are going to. That's why as I'm doing my live video, I'm doing my live, they will come every time to distract you. So pay attention. You that is married, you that want a serious relationship, you that want a good man, you that want a good woman, you that want to go on a serious date. A lot of these noisemakers here, they, they, are not, they don't want what you want. The day you begin to understand that people don't want what you want, eh, you are going to focus. A lot of these people here are just noisemakers. A lot of these people here are just nonchalant idiots. So you don't let them distract you. You pick up the necessary things that is going to help you in your marriage, your relationship, your friendship, and utilize it and become a better person. With this viewpoint of mine, guys, um, I hope I've been able to convince and not to confuse you that marriage is a beautiful thing. It's just what you make out of it. So I'm quickly going to take a few questions before I go. A few questions, guys. You have any questions? Few questions guys drop it for me now you have any question you want to ask greetings there any questions guys mm. somebody said Cora is giving you poop um, many distractions to see what you will feel yes whether Cora is giving us distraction or Cora is not giving us distraction her story is people else's reality. So whether Cora is pulling a stunt or not, or she's lying, or she and her husband, they are playing games, don't worry. Hmm? Her story, this stunt and this game that they are playing, is actually people's reality. So we are not just talking about Cora. We are just using Cora as a point of contact, since she's the visible person that we can see. But this same story that she's going through, whether it is true or whether it's a lie, it is people's actual story. 
so Oga rest. Hmm? People are learning. Okay? Next question. Next question, guys. Uh, how do you know this is the right choice? Action. That's the reason why I always tell people about self-awareness. You will only be asking this question when you don't know who you are. It's like somebody, it's like you asking me, how do I know that I like rice or I like beans? Or it's like you asking me, how do I know my favorite food? That's the meaning of this question you're asking me now. Mm -hmm. So that's why each time we talk about self-awareness, you people will be saying motivational speaker. But you need to at least understand yourself before you want to go and understand somebody else. Who are you? So understand yourself. You will now know when somebody is right for you because somebody is right for you when they can treat you right. The question is, how do you know that somebody is treating you right? When you cannot treat yourself right. Good. So go back to self-awareness. Um, what do you think about intermarriage? Intermarriage is a choice. It's your choice. I don't make choice for people. I only guide people on their choices. You will choose. I will guide you. Do you understand? I cannot choose for you. Anything you choose today, I will guide you on it. For me, I don't choose for people because what I like is not what you like. And what you like is not what I like. So as a relationship therapist, my job is not to choose for you. My job is to guide you on the choices that you have made. What will you do when you notice your spouse's change? I don't get that. Ask the question again. Why is it that why is it that when a man sees a woman that truly loves the questions okay why is it that when a man sees a woman that truly truly loves him he does not take her serious you are generalizing ask yourself why do i like to choose men that don't appreciate the love i give to them you know sometimes when we have one or two experience, we'll start generalizing. you start saying, why do men? It's not all men, please. I've never experienced, I've never given a man my love that did not give me back. If I give you love and you don't give me back, I'll collect my love and walk away. That's the difference between you and I. So stop saying men. They are your choices. Why do you like to choose men that don't like to appreciate what you give? Why can't you walk away when you give people love and they don't appreciate it? Did they tie you as a, are you three? So the question you're asking is not general. It's not men. Men, there are lots of men that appreciate love. But the question is, why do you use, why are you always choosing men? That when you give them love, they'll throw it to your face. Okay. If they throw it to your face, why can't you walk away? Did they tie you to the man? Why are you forcing love on him? If you give me something and I say I don't want, you leave me alone now. Why do you keep going to men that keep rejecting what you give? So it's your choice. It's not, the, it's not men as a whole. Stop choosing the wrong men. Do you understand? It's like someone generally saying love is wicked. Love is not wicked. You are the one that likes to go and be dating wicked people. Some of you like wicked people. Some of you like to make wicked choices to yourself. You will see that somebody does not like you. You will stay there. Somebody is beating you. You will stay there. Somebody wants to kill you. You will stay there. They do all the bad things to you. You are there. You are the one that comes and be shouting love is wicked. Love, love is not wicked. It's you that like wickedness. You enjoy it when people are wicked to you. That's why you used to stay. Nobody tie you there. So your choices are your problem. Stop generalizing. It is the people that you choose. Do you understand? So start making right choices. Next time, I'm going to teach you guys about pattern. How do you know that someone doesn't want you anymore? It's very obvious by their action. Pay attention to their action. Somebody said, see you talking about marriage. Okay, I think those are one of the news I'm talking about. Maybe she just bumped into my live videos. They are still the same people that cannot afford my fee. Mama, please keep me anonymous. They are in the category. Next question. Um, how do you know a man that truly loves you? That's one of the most foolish questions I always get from women. How do you know a man truly loves you? It's very obvious now. Do you love yourself? If you love yourself enough, you will not be asking how to know a man love you. Because when a man loves you, he's going to treat you how much you treat yourself. So for you to ever ask, anytime you, do, you ask this question, how do you know a man love you? Just know that you don't love yourself. Because even a blind person, someone that does not have eyes, can identify love. 
Next question. Um, somebody said walking away is not that easy. If walking away is not easy, stop complaining. It's simple. Walking away is not that easy. Fine. If walking away is not that easy, stop complaining. Shut up and stay there. Until you are ready to leave the situation, then stop complaining. Why complain about the things that you don't want to change? Every time you are lamenting, you are grumbling. You have the power to walk. You are not crippled. They did not tie you. They did not kidnap you. It's just that walking away is not easy. Then why are you complaining? Is mouth not paining you? Are you not tired of talking? It is your complaint that is betting our opinion. Because if you don't complain, we will not even know that you are suffering in marriage. You will suffer there in peace. But no, you don't want to walk away and you keep lamenting, you keep complaining, you keep grumbling. Oh, oh men are wicked. Oh, men are, you are still in the marriage. Men are scum. You are still in the marriage. It simply means you don't know what you want. If you know you cannot walk away, don't complain. I said it yesterday. It's either you endure, you manage the situation, or you let it go. Those people that don't know how to let go, they are managing, they are enduring. The best of endurance comes in when you don't, when you, it is not easy for you to let go. Eh? Those that want to let go, go. You that cannot let go, manage and endure. Don't disturb us now. Eh? You can't be saying it is not easy to let go. Only you still complaining. Hey, 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 hey. Choose a struggle. Choose a struggle. Stay one place. Stay in one place. Either you are in or you are out. No, no, no. Next question. Somebody said walking away is very easy, my sister. Leave all these people. When they are ready to walk away, they walk away. They will not even tell you. <laughs> I remember when my ex-husband was beating me. My mom would tell me, Inkiru, are you sure you will not come home? I would say, Mommy, don't worry. I would, don't worry. His marriage is not that bad. My uncle would call me, Inkiru, this man will kill you. Are you sure you will not come home? I would say, Uncle, don't worry. I'm good. Uncle, don't worry. The day I finally left my ex-husband, I did not tell anybody. Initially, before, when I did not want to leave, I would complain. I will call my mom. I will call my dad. I will call my friends. I will call my uncle. I will be complaining. See, this man want to keep me. Yet, I will not go. I'll be in the marriage and be complaining. I'll call my parents and give my parents burden. My mom will be, my mother will be worried. In Kira, are you okay? Yesterday you were crying. Are you okay? My father will be worried. My uncles will be worried. My sister will be worried. Every time I'll be complaining to them. Oh yeah, come back home now. <laughs> Mommy, it's not easy. It's not easy to leave my marriage. Only me is complaining. At some point, my mother got my mother does not sleep. In Kira, are you okay? In Kira, I had a dream about you. Go leave the marriage. Now, Mommy, don't worry. I'll be fine. I'll be, I'll be okay. The day I finally left my ex-husband, the day I finally walked away, nobody told me to walk away. I did not even tell anybody. The day I left my ex, I did not complain. I did not call my mother. I did not call my father. I did not call my brother. I did not call my sister. I walked away on my own. So all these people that are saying, it's not easy. It's... When you are ready, my sister, you will not even come to social media. Sir. The day you will want to walk away, social media will not even hear it. Mm, you know, we don't know. You will just walk away. Probably it's when you have walked away after a few years, you come out telling us, Hey, whoa, I walked away two years ago. I was that lady on Blessing CEO's life that was shouting, It's not easy, it's not easy. And you finally walk away. <laughs> so when people talk, I just I just laugh. Okay, no, I cannot. Walking away is not easy. Stay there now. Stay. <laughs> My mom is calling me. Hello, mommy. Hmm? Oh, you're finished cooking. I should start coming. <laughs> eh. You have you get coconut head. They say make you no know waste for them. See me see trouble. Oh. Mm. Mm. Okay. No wala well, no. Mm. Alright, Monsi. Mm, but maybe I'll come later in the evening. Hold up, do you do now? I'll check in on the airport. So when you start going home, let me know. Mm. How far you test my ofaku? <laughs> you don't chop the ofaku. We saw where they shout, hey. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, uh. You said? You are welcome, Mom. No wala. No wala. No yeah. All right, Mom. All right. Yeah. I'll see you later. Okay. God, I'm sweating. This ring light is making me to sweat. Like I'm sweating, guys. Like I'm sweating. 
I'm sweating. Somebody said, hmm, person no go hear word again. Every day, my ex-husband, my ex-husband. You never even start. I never even start to talk about my ex-husband. I go use my ex-husband just blind your ear. Hmm. No, I never even start to talk about my ex-husband. I go use the gist blind your ear until you're tired to come to my live video. I go use the gist blind your ear. Every time where I want to talk, I go talk about my ex-husband, my ex-husband, I go talk about my ex-husband. If they pay you, hit your head for all. Or no, buy data. Hmm? Now me get live video. Anything if I want to talk about my ex-husband for one year, I go to talk him. If I want to talk about my ex-husband for 25 years, I go to talk him. Now your data. So you know go teach me what to talk about. If he pepper you, open your own live video, talk about your ex-boyfriend. If he is marry, if he is marry, make him remain to be ex. All these lot of buruku girls, whenever I even find a husband, they go to not talk nonsense. Sha marry divorce. If he is marry husband, born, divorce. Yeah. Next question. What about their kids? How do they, are they going to cope? So people that their parents are not together, they died, Shibi. So you are saying that people that their parents are not together, they cannot be raised. People where their mama and papa don't die in court. Orphans, are they not growing? Is it not orphans that are becoming president and um, governors? Is it not orphans that are becoming wealthy? How does your parents stop you from growing up? Because your parents separated, you will not grow up again. You must be a joker. Next question, please. Um, next question. Mama, please call my name. Deborah Samuel. Okay. I'm not seeing any question again. So I want to hope that the message, you learned one or two things from the message. Thank you so much, guys. God bless every one of you for always popping into my live video, listening, learning one or two things. God bless every one of you. I think I have to go right now. I love you guys very, very much. Have a wonderful day. Make sure you find time to go and party today. You understand? Go to club, drink something, eat something, have fun. For those of you that are always sitting down inside the house, 24 hours, you're inside the house. You they sleep for hours. Go out. Go out. How you want to find husband if you don't come out outside? Go out. Go somewhere. All these girls that are looking for husband, but they're always in the house. Go out. To the men, go and boogie down, go and boogie down, go and party. Diggy, 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 we don't work from Monday to Friday, you know, easy. Eh? So it's time to bring out at least 10K from your salary. You will not die. Bring out 10K from your salary. You will not die and spoil yourself. Go on. Do good, 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 do good. Hey, she gets him money. Hey, hey. So I want to see my ladies in the club today. Oh. Make sure you scatter your head. Problem, no, they finish. Oh. Problem, no, they finish. So, my sister, enjoy it while you still stay healthy. So, <laughs> okay guys <laughs> i love you guys so very much so um <laughs> okay let me leave you guys it's like i'm gonna charge my phone and run other hands so i love you guys very very much bye bye